What's going on? This is Nick Leverett with the Tampa Bay Bucks, and you are listening to Tom School Podcast. What is going on, everyone? It's your boy Q. We got another fantastic interview for you guys today. On today's interview, we are going to be talking to Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive lineman Nick Verrett, or my bad, Nick Leverett. A fantastic prospect. Super excited to be talking to him today. And, you know, this could be somebody who is keeping Tom Brady upright, keeping the Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning football games, beating Drew Brees, beating Matt Ryan, getting their way into a Super Bowl potentially. This could be someone very critical to that happening. Super excited to talk to Nick today. But before we bring him in, let's go ahead and let's bring in Anthony. Anthony, how are we doing, man? Great and looking forward to talking to great NFL prospect and a lot of undrafted offensive linemen go on to have great careers and this guy's going to be one of them. So excited to get to talk to him. Yeah, that is very true. We've seen plenty of offensive linemen have great careers that have gone undrafted, just like you said. And a little bit of background and some cool notes about this new Buccaneers. He uh, agreed to terms on April 25th, 2020 as an undrafted free agent. He's six foot four, 310 pounds, all conference USA, honorable mention in 2019. And hey, this is a critical one right here only allowed two sacks this past season. That is very impressive in of itself. He was one of 22 players named to the 2018 All-State AFCA Good Works team for his efforts in the community while attending North Carolina Central, and he was selected for the College Gridiron All-Star Showcase as one of the top senior college offensive linemen in the country. Nick, how are we doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Thank you guys for having me on the show, man. Yeah, man, super excited to talk to you today. Where can the people follow you at on uh, Instagram and Twitter? So my Twitter, uh, my Twitter is at underscore Big Nick 74. And my Instagram is at Big Nick underscore 75. Great. And we'll be sure to follow you as our fans will as well. First and foremost, welcome to Tampa. Welcome. Welcome to be a Buccaneer. How does it make you feel to perhaps get to protect one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best of all time, Tom Brady? Okay, well, first and foremost, like I said, thank you guys for welcoming me to, welcoming me to the team. But um, it's definitely a great feeling, man. I think Tom entered the NFL when I was about, I want to say, like three years old. So, you know, I've been watching him since I was a little boy. Um, but, yeah, I like his style of play. I love his attitude towards the game. And I'm definitely excited to play next to him this season. It's going to be incredible. He's 43, and he's got all these young guys around him. So he's literally, you know, more than double some of these guys' age. So, you know, that's going to be awesome. That's fun to watch. Who is the first member from the Buccaneers organization that reached out to you to let you know, hey, you are going to be a Buccaneer? Was it general manager like offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich, um, offensive line coach Harold Goodwin? Who was it? Um, the first person to hit me up was Coach Goodwin. Um, he called me after the draft and welcomed me to the team in the office line room. So it was definitely exciting. Uh, it was definitely an exciting uh, feeling and uh, definitely one to remember. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So how hard was it to prepare for, you know, this year's draft with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic? You know, what kind of things did you feel were different in your preparation this year than maybe would have been different in, you know, last year or potentially next year? Um, so how how was it? It was definitely hard, but um, definitely doable. Um, the facility I was working out at actually didn't close until after my pro day. So a little story, um, my pro day was still going on around that time. So I actually flew down to Houston. And as soon as I landed, like literally as soon as I landed, turned my phone off airplane mode, I got multiple messages saying like, your pro day has been canceled. So um my agent arranged a, a virtual pro day. He got in contact with uh, scouts and um, the guy I had been training with. So I had an actual pro day, just not with the scouts, and they just recorded it. So it, it, it actually ended up working out pretty good. Nice. That's awesome, man. And again, we are here with Nick Leverett, offensive lineman, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You were labeled as one of the best community guys in college football in 2018. Tampa Bay is very big in helping their community. What excites you about getting a chance to help the Tampa area? What excites me the most um, is just the opportunity to get down there and, uh, to access, to have the access to be able to help more people. Um, I've had, this, I haven't had a chance to actually reach out to them, but I plan on reaching out to a few organizations like 
uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks Foundation uh, and participate in their uh, initiatives, uh, the Junior Bucks and uh, the city of Tampa Parks and Rec. So it's definitely exciting. I'm ready to, uh, you know, do God's work. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, I love it when, you know, you've got these humble guys who come on, you know, they make it to the NFL and, and they actually do give back to the community. I think that's very important. It just shows, you know, how good of a man you are and you're, you and yourself. And I mean, another guy that comes to my mind, Jameis Winston, we've talked about Jameis exclu- a lot on this podcast. And, you know, this is somebody who, even though he's not in Tampa anymore, is still helping the Tampa community. So absolutely love seeing people giving back to the community. So what was your favorite memory plan? Playing at Rice and uh, North Carolina Central. Mm. My favorite memory, I would say, my favorite memory at North Carolina Central was uh, would definitely be uh, my freshman year when I when we played North Carolina A and T. That was like our rivalry team, and it was a championship game for the conference champs, um, and it was on ESPN. Um, so I was actually a freshman playing alongside four seniors. So you know, it definitely meant a lot to me to make sure they were sent out the right way. So. We ended up beating them that night, and it was just a joyful feeling. Um, my favorite memory at Rice would be my last game of my collegiate career. We um, we went down to play UTSA in El Paso, and we actually won. And I, uh, I think that was the first time I had cried in years, man. I, it was such a bittersweet feeling. And, um, you know, we just we went out on top, man. Uh, but, yeah, it was definitely a joyful, joyful moment, and I would definitely miss being a Rice Owl in the North Carolina Central Eagles. Yeah, that's awesome. Those are some great moments, man. So you are one of three undrafted free agent offensive linemen brought in. And obviously the Bucs have added Tristan Wirfs in the first round. What excites you the most about growing with your rookie teammates? Um, You know, it kind of gives you the feeling of, you know, becoming a freshman in college all over again. Um, You know, it's just the class you're coming in with. Um, But I'm definitely excited to play with those guys. Um, It's like, you know, we're in this thing together and, you know, we're going to ride. We're going to we going to ride to the wheels fall off, man. I'm excited to play with those guys. Yeah, and I'm sure they're excited to play with you as well. As You had a whopping 80-plus percent winning percentage at the offensive line position last year. That means you win more than eight out of every ten of your battles. That's incredible. You only allowed two sacks, as Q mentioned earlier. What excites you most about keeping that success by working with Coach Goodwin, one of the most premier offensive line coaches in the National Football League? Um, just like you said, he's one of the most premier offensive line coaches in the league. You know, just to be able to learn from Coach Goodwin is amazing. Um, I've heard so many good things about him. Um, he's definitely been in the league for a while, so um, d- he definitely knows what he's doing. And, you know, I'm just – I'm definitely excited just to, you know, be able to, you know, after this pandemic, be able to go down there and just, you know, sit down there and talk X and O's with him. Yeah, Tampa Bay is a great coach and staff. Bruce Arians is a great guy. Coach Lolo Jones, your assistant D-line female coach. She's a great friend of mine. I talk to her sometimes. She's awesome. Got some great opportunities to meet some great connections and coaches. After playing at a couple different colleges and playing in many different stadiums, what excites you most at playing in Raymond James Stadium and other key marquee NFL venues? Um. I mean, it's all exciting. Um, just being able to play in the NFC South makes it even better. Um, I grew up in North Carolina and Georgia. Um, you know, I'm a country boy, Carolina, Georgia boy. So I grew up watching all of them play. Um, so just being able to have my family close um, is definitely a blessing. Uh, just to know, like, they'll be able to have a chance to come to my games, my NFL games. Were you a Panthers fan then growing up? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> hey, that's okay. Hey, now you're. Hey, hey I'm, a, I'm a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan now, so. That's all that That's right. Now you're going to get the chance to play them and beat them twice a year, so that's going to be incredible. And have you had any team meetings or OTAs to this point virtual-wise? I know some teams started this week, some teams later this week, other teams next week. What are the Buccaneers' plans? Um, so right now we're only having um, our rookie seminars with all the other rookies, but um, it's definitely going good. Um, it's great meeting all the other rookies that are uh, have signed with me. Yeah, and I'm sure they're um, excited just as you are to, you know, meet coaches, meet other players. Just, you know, although you can't get in the same building, it's still nice connecting, whether it's um, FaceTime or Zoom or whatever it is. And we're here with Buccaneers offense lineman Nick Loverett. What do you look forward to most in these virtual offseason rookie meetings? And have you been able to talk to any of the veterans like Ryan Jensen, Ali Marpet, or any of those guys? Um, what I look forward to the most um... – Getting getting to work with my teammates, um, building a good camaraderie, and uh, learning the system even more, of course. Um, but I actually haven't had the chance to uh, speak with Jensen and Marpet or uh, any of the other guys because uh, 
I've been finishing uh, my master's. Wow. But I just finished that um, last week, so I definitely plan on talking with them soon. Congratulations. Yeah, man, hats off to you for that. That's awesome. So let's real quick, let's kind of rewind. Let's go back to draft week and real quick. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, that experience of the draft and, you know, knowing, you know, not really seeing a whole lot of smaller school guys going off the board. You know, what what kind of was going through your head as the draft was windling down and then actually getting that phone call from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers kind of take us through that moment. So draft day, um, I def I, I like I watched the whole draft, um, and like I got to day three, things kind of got frustrating. I seen a lot of uh, I I didn't see a lot of guys in my conference uh get uh picked, so you know it kind of got frustrating. So you know I just took a step away from the TV. I talked to my parents; they said just take a step away from the TV. So I went into my room, read a book, um, just sat down and just got my mind away from football and the draft for a moment. But um, you know after I got that call, you know it was great. Um. My agent ended up calling me, um, you know, it, it, it was like five minutes after the draft had ended. Um, my agent had texted me. He was like, hey, Nick, call me ASAP, like literally five minutes after. So I called him. He was like, hey, how you doing? I said, you know, I'm, I'm all right. I could be better, but, you know, I'm good. He said, well, I got some great news for you. You know, you're a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. They want you a lot. And, you know, I, you know, as soon as he said that, you know, everything just turned. I got Immediately excited. Um, it's, it was a blessing feeling, definitely a time to remember, a, a feeling I will never forget. Yeah, I've been lucky enough to see the video of yourself finding out you are a Buccaneer. That is a great video to watch. And um, what are you looking forward to most? I can see the tears, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, hey, it's a great moment. And like you said, this year's draft is crazy. A lot of guys deserving to get drafted didn't end up getting drafted, which is okay because this is the best UDFA class ever, and we're going to witness history, and I'm a firm believer in that. And what are you looking forward to most as an NFL player? Is it the chance to influence the community? Is it playing in the bright lights? Five primetime games this year. That's crazy. Not something, you know, Conference USA usually plays earlier or, you know, certain week nights or whatnot and uh, playing with the icons etc what's your favorite thing to do or what what are you looking forward to most um shoot to be honest all three you know I definitely want to win games um and I I, I want to definitely have a chance to learn from some of the greats and um and to be able to do what I can do to change the world I mean it's definitely all three of them yeah, that's awesome. And so have you been assigned uh, or, you know, have you been able to choose your jersey number or anything like that so far? Yeah, so they actually assigned me 60. So I got to go back and change my uh, my social media handles uh, to Big Nick 60 now. So, yeah, they gave me 60. Nice. That's awesome, man. So, you know, like like we've kind of alluded to so far this entire interview, you know, we've seen so many undrafted free agents have success at the next level, you know, just to name a couple of them for you. Kurt Warner, Tony Jefferson, Josh Wells, Wes Welker, Tony Romo, recently, at least uh, running back wise, we've seen Philip Lindsay, Austin Eckler, the list continues to go on and on. What excites you most about your opportunity to become the next historic undrafted free agent like these guys mentioned earlier um I don't know that's that's kind of something I wouldn't really you know I haven't really been focused on but um you know I would just hope for my name to be you know on this same question to the next un, uh, undrafted free agent one day you know that, that's just my uh, biggest hope yeah I think that's a great answer man so tell us one thing that you would tell other undrafted free agents that are still waiting to hear that call from a team one thing I would say is don't give up. Um, it's not over. You know, it's still a lot of time until, like, the season starts. Um, you know, I've seen guys who, you know, didn't end up getting a call until later, and then, you know, they ended up making a team. And, you know, they just – they didn't give up. So, you know, don't ever hang your hat just because things ain't going the way you want it. Um, you definitely worked hard for this moment, and, you know, teams definitely see that. So just be patient and stay the course. Yeah, your teammate Cameron Bray, who's been quite a successful tight end in the NFL, got that call, I think maybe in July. So it took a while and, you know, it's turned out well for him. He ended up signing a six-year, $36 million deal to be a Buccaneer for the next year. So, you know, those guys still have hope. And have you ever been to the Tampa area before? And if so, what do you like about it? And what are you looking forward to most about becoming a member of their community? Oh. Um. Honestly, I've never been to the Tampa area before. I think I've only been to Florida once, and I went to Orlando to go to Universal Studios. So 
I mean, the, the only thing I really look forward to the most is like, like I was mentioning earlier, just being able to give back to the community, uh, you know, just setting a positive influence to the community. Well, you're lucky too in your downtime. They have some nice beaches. They got some great parks. You know, when this pandemic's over, you're going to enjoy Tampa. It's really a great time. It's a great area. And kind of on an opposite note, we are a fantasy football podcast. We love fantasy football. We breathe fantasy football. Have you ever played fantasy football yourself? And what excites you the most about knowing that you can be a key contributor and success for guys like Ronald Jones and the rookie running backs of the Buccaneers team and their fantasy potential? Um, I've actually never played fantasy football. So, um, you know, our coach was always on us about, you know, we couldn't do that or whatever. So I never played fantasy football. So I really don't know too much about it. But I mean, shoot, any way I can help my teammates, you know, whether it's fantasy or real life or, you know, whatever, like, I'm definitely down. I, you know, it, it definitely means like a, a good bit to me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I hope I help Ronald and all the other rookie quarterbacks. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I wish more people knew about fantasy. That's something that we started this podcast for to kind of, you know, get more people involved into fantasy. A lot of those bigger name fantasy podcasts, they just talk and talk and talk and they don't really make sense of what's going on. And I think you could be a very key contributor to Ronald Jones success or Keyshawn Vaughn or anything like that. So if you ever want to play some fantasy football or learn more about it, man, I definitely recommend tapping in. We, you know, are thinking about even starting a league together with some of the guys we've interviewed. So, you know, if you ever want to give it a shot, man, just make sure you let us know. Just just let me know, man. I'm down, man. I'm down to learn new things, man. Let's go. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, again, highly appreciate your time, Nick. Cannot wait for you to make those key blocks for Tom Brady, for Ronald Jones, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, you know, hey, maybe they win a Super Bowl. Maybe you're a key contributor to that. We highly appreciate your time. Highly appreciate you coming on, man. And I uh, wish nothing but the best for you. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Can't wait to watch you on Thursdays, Sundays, and Mondays.